Hello everybody. Uh, we have a bit of a two-parter. So for this episode, I want to set up an ability system for us. Uh, set up our power-ups, make sure it's displayed on the screen. And then the next episode, we are actually going to implement those power-ups and have them start working. So as you can see, I can run into it. Our current ability label will change. And we're good to go. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so I just want to dive straight into this ability system. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is create a new scene, a uh, 3D scene, and we can just call it ability collectible. And this is just going to be our little object that the player can run into to collect abilities. And it's really just going to be two things. It's just going to have our mesh and our collection area. And so for that, I have some meshes for us. I have a corkscrew which is going to be for a spring ability, which uh, is kind of like a double jump. And I also have a propeller, which is going to be kind of like a glide. And don't worry about this. Uh, I have uh, the scale and pivot point set in the right place in the GitHub file, so try not to worry about that. Let's scale it up a little more. But yeah, just make sure it's centered and a good scale for us. And then, yeah, that should be good. So now let's add our collection area. So I'm going to add an area 3D. And we can just call this collection area. Let's make sure it's uh, on the world layer and it's looking for the player. And then let's add a collision shape for it to make sure that the player can actually collide into it. And I'm going to just make it a little bigger. So now we can go ahead into our objects and save it in a ability collectible folder. So that should be good. And now in the player HUD, I just want to make sure that the player knows what ability they have. So I'm just going to duplicate our coins collected label, but we'll set this one to the bottom center. And then holding down Alt and Shift, uh, it's kind of lets me just uh, lock it on one axis. I'm just going to move it up like 32 pixels. And you can tell how much I am on the bottom left. So, yep, that's good. And then we can just change this filler text to something like current ability, uh, like spring or something. And that's perfect. Actually, I think I'll turn down the font size a little bit. Oh, if you saw this also change, and that's because I didn't make this unique. So let me make it unique first. Reduce it a little bit. And there we go. And so now we have our scene set up, so let's start scripting things out. So in the player, in the marble scripts, I'm going to uh, start letting the, the marble know like what power-ups we have. So I'm going to add a new variable type called an enum. We'll call it abilities. And we'll make some empty brackets. And then inside those, we'll create a value called none in all caps spring in all caps and propeller Oops, spelled it wrong sorry and so none is just like our default if we have no abilities then set equal to none and to give a better explanation of what an enum is is uh, I like to describe it by using a comparison so imagine if we made like an integer and we called it abilities right like we could say, you know, if this abilities value is equal to zero, that's kind of like being equal to none. If it's equal to one, then it's kind of like spring. And if it's equal to two, it's kind of like having the propeller. But you'll notice it's kind of like almost like a magic number. Like what is two? What is one? So with these enums, it kind of makes things a little bit more clear and identifiable. But just so you know, these are exactly the same concept, just, uh, just on the front end, it makes things look a little nicer for us. But what we need to do is we actually need to keep track of what ability the player has. Because these are like our options, but we need to keep track of just one of them. So we'll do current ability of type abilities is equal to abilities.none. Because we just want to default the player to have no power-ups or abilities off of the get-go. So that should be good. And now what we want to do is we want to head into a player, into the player and add a new signal called ability collected. 
so when the player runs into our little power up uh it'll you know um let the player know and we want to pass in a value of type of marvel abilities and you'll see uh, IntelliSense didn't work right there and I think that's just because of a bug in this current Godot version we have in the next video I plan on updating our Godot so uh, yeah hopefully that doesn't happen anymore oh, let me spell this correctly and what we immediately want to do is we actually just want to hook up this signal straight into the Marvel and it's really easy and make sure that you put it in the Marvel and not the player when you hook up the signal it'll show up in the Marvel script and now we'll just say current ability is equal to whatever ability we just collected with that value and so now we can uh, start scripting our ability collectible so let's head in to that scene and add a new script this is fine let me look at my uh, project reference real quick sorry and all right so first thing we want to do is give it a class name of like ability collectible and then we want to make sure that we have references to our objects and I'm actually just gonna hide them or we'll show them but then on the ready we can just hide them immediately But anyways, um, all we want to do is have an export variable called ability. And we can set it equal to marvel.abilities. Or give it the type of marvel.abilities, excuse me. So now if we look in the inspector, you'll see we can give it an ability. And I'll just set it like equal to spring initially. But now, like we can say match ability uh, marvel dot abilities dot spring uh, we can just show the corkscrew and same for the propeller will show the propeller and now we just got to hook up our body entered signal for when the player runs into it kind of similar to like how the, we did it for the coins so we'll say if body that owner that is in group player we can cast to the player so we'll just say var player equal of type player is equal to body dot owner and then we can say player dot emit or I like to do it more like this ability collected dot emit and we can just pass in that ability And then right after we can just queue it free. So there we go. Now uh, it should emit the signal, pass in whatever ability this is set to, and set the players because the uh, player is listening for that signal. It'll set that current ability to that. So I think we are pretty good oh we actually need to do one thing and that's hook up this to the player hud and it, it looks like I forgot to rename this so we can just call it ability collected label hop in the hud script we'll just drag this right in and uh, because of the idea that the player is constantly getting new abilities like for the coins coins are only getting updated they're never really going away um, what I like to do when things are a little more um, fluid, I guess you could call it, is I like to just put 
uh, the value straight in the process function so it's being changed every frame it's not nearly as efficient let me put it that way but I think it'll be fine just because we have so little things going on but if you have a bunch of like text being changed and stuff I would not suggest putting it in process but anyways uh, let's just go ahead and get a uh, reference to our player so we'll just say player so equal to get tree dot get first known group player and uh we'll just make a new function called uh update current ability text and we first want to get a reference to our marble So we can know what uh, current ability we have. So we can just say uh, our marble is equal to player dot marble. Let's make sure that it's set to marble. Oops, just pass this for now. And then all we need to say is match marble dot current ability we'll say marble dot abilities dot none and we'll start setting it to what we want to say so we'll say ability collected label dot text equals current ability none Oop, not node none and now we can just copy this over for the other two abilities have to make sure that this is a lowercase because we're not casting to it excuse me there we go so we'll say for the spring we'll say a current ability of spring and then for the propeller we can make it say propeller oh let me make sure I spell this right again so now all we need to do is make sure in the process function we're updating our text should be good to go and now let's go ahead and just uh, throw these in the main scene make sure our uh, things are being updated and we should be good to go after that so I'm just gonna add a new uh, blank node and this is just gonna be kind of like our container for our abilities now we can go ahead and instantiate our ability. Move it over here. Um, this is a big thing. Make sure that we are making it sh sure it's not set to none. So now we should be able to play. Our current ability is none. If we run into this, boom, our current ability is now spring. And if we actually look, Oh wait, I just want to, I forgot, I didn't mean to stop it. So if we actually look in the remote, go into our player, go to our marble, it'll say uh, current ability is one. And like I was saying, enums are just integers. So in reality, it's whatever this one is. So one is spring. So we have the spring. And there you have it, guys. That is the beginning of our power up or ability system in the next video we are actually going to start implementing them it's it won't be too bad so uh thanks for watching